Hello, my name is Lexi Davis. I'm a self-discovery coach, a yoga and meditation instructor, a love enthusiast, and a really playful human being. I serve people through my business, Alive to Enjoy, and this is Heart Snuggles, a holistic wellness podcast where I invite guests to drop into their heart space through authentic conversations and compassionate intentions, all in mini cuddly episodes, hoping that you connect to your truth in the most authentic version of yourself. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to Heart Snuggles. We're so happy you're here today. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So you want to go ahead and give yourself a little introduction to everyone. All right. My name is Keish. I am an organic farmer. I'm an author. I'm a chef. Uh, Right now I'm in Los Angeles uh, and just cooking away. I actually cook for Shaman Durek, of course. That's how um, we connected. And I travel around the world learning different traditional and authentic recipes from different countries around the world. I have this idea of preserving as traditional as possible recipes from around the world, especially as the world is going into fusion and exploring food. I still want to know, like, what was the authentic soup that I learned in Turkey? Or what is the authentic, you know, bean dish or something that I learned somewhere else? I love tradition, you know, and of course I'm open to fusion. I'm open to learning new things, but I also want to know what is their foundation? What is their grounding? So that's what I travel and do is learn authentic traditional foods, whether it's like making pasta with a 200 uh, year old rolling pin in Italy or sitting down in India with people in the village and learning how to roll chapatis with our rolling pin. You know, just really like learning things the traditional way really fills me up. It's so beautiful. I feel like we're so disconnected from the roots. And so it's such a great way to like bring us back in. And there's so much goodness in the traditions. And so yeah. uh, so cool that you're doing that. Do you have a cookbook? I do not have my cookbook yet. It's in the process of being written. And my cookbook is called Keisha's Table, A Love Affair with Food. So cute. So, so it's going to be my, my love affair with food since I was eight years old when I learned to cook and how I have traveled to different places and just, yeah, just how I view food, just how I view sustenance. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. So how did you start on this cooking journey? You just kind of briefly touched on it, but tell me more. <laughs> well, at first. As far as learning to cook, I was seven years old and I asked my mom if I could help her make the Sunday uh, lunch that day. She said, I said, can I make the rice? And little did I know she had already made the rice, but she just, she saw my enthusiasm. So she let me make the rice and I totally blundered. And there was so much water in this cooked rice. It was like kanji. And she laughed and so then she taught me how to cook rice properly. Then I thought I can cook rice so I can cook anything. And my friends went fishing and I said, hey guys, let me cook the fish for us. And then I messed it up. Oh, I still remember this. And I just like made this soup, but all the fish just like disintegrated in it. (laughs) And my friends were so angry. And I made a vow, like I'm not gonna piss anybody else off with food. So I started following the maid and my mom everywhere. Like, what's this? Why are you cooking this? Why are you like, why are you using this? What's this? And why is this so spicy? And I asked every question possible. And that inquisitive and curious nature of mine has taken me all over the world. And that's exactly what I do when I'm in India. I'm like, so why are you cooking with this? Or what's that? That's a grinding mortar. Wow, what does it do? And just wanting to learn everything about cooking and food, so. I love that. I think curious. I don't know why anyone ever like puts curiosity down. I'm like, I've always been such a curious soul. And I think that's one of the most beautiful parts of life is like wanting to know more and ask those questions. And there's so much more to know. There's so much to know about life. So it's such a beautiful thing to ask questions because first of all, I think people don't want to feel like they're stupid or ignorant. So we don't ask questions. But I rather look stupid and ignorant because when you can expose that vulnerability, then you give yourself reason to learn. You give yourself the gift of knowledge. So I always like learning. Yeah, and, and like we're human. Like we all have different paths, so we're not going to know everything, you know? So it's like it's so important to ask. And then and then you get that knowledge. And you're right, like you have to be vulnerable, but it's so worth it. And Exactly. 
Ugh, yay. And look at you now thriving. So how is life? Like I'm, I have such a travel bug as well. Like I'm always moving around and people are like, where are you now? <laughs> but how do you, how do you manage that? And like, how does it feel to live like that? At the, in the beginning, it was hard because of course, you know, we think about, oh, employment or do I have enough money and all these different things. But what I found was I followed my heart and everything else fell into place. Like I go to certain countries and do couch surfing dinners, right? And all of a sudden I have like 20 people in my apartment I was renting, you know, like in Georgia or Turkey and they all came for dinner, but then they all bring a donation as part of the, you know, as part of the contribution to the food. And I realized, wow, here's a good way to do it. Or one of those people are like, oh my God, I know such and such and you have to cook for the person and then there I go like cooking for a beautiful family or cooking dinner somewhere so because I followed my heart knowing that I love cooking and I love the world I love history I love people those three things together just like opening my heart like wherever I go I will be taken care of I walked the Camino de Santiago is this 500 mile walk across Spain. And even on the Camino, there were people for me to cook for, you know, and like to contribute to my, my path. So that's one thing I really suggest is follow one's heart and everything that needs to come with that will come with it. Agreed. So beautiful. Your heart always leads you to the best places. And, and that's like couch surfing has been some of the, my favorite experiences. Like you just meet such wonderful, open-minded people. And like you said, it just trickles and trickles. Like as you continue to step into the unknown and just trust, like you will be rewarded. <laughs> well, that, that's where it's at. And of course the pandemic was really hard because I, you know, I was stuck in one place. I was in New York, uh, upstate New York for about five months or six months at the beginning of the pandemic when I came back from Egypt. And it was a little hard because I'm so used to just, you know, like being ready for the next adventure. And then here I am stuck in this place and just stuck inside. But it was also good to appreciate because I got to do more writing. I got to really focus on the structure of my cookbook and like what I really want to offer through my cookbook. So everything went pretty well. <laughs> that's good and I have such a fascination with Egypt will you teach us some traditions from Egypt that you've picked up I didn't learn anything oh. in Egypt um, because I was there for about 10 days and in those 10 days it, it was very chaotic you know that I didn't get to absorb myself into the culture so I am planning a trip again to Egypt because I want to stay in Cairo and really learn to make Egyptian food, either Cairo or like Dahab or somewhere where they cook their traditional dishes. I want to sit with people and learn from them. So I'll be back with answers to that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. And what about where you're from? What are some of the traditions? From Liberia? Well, I'm making a Liberian spread tomorrow because it's my mom's birthday, August 19th. And in honor of her, I'm going to make some really good food for my friends and whoever will come to lunch. And I'm making um, a few of Liberia's favorite dishes. So I'm making palm butter. And palm butter, you use the, the pulp from the red palm fruit and you make this stew out of it that cooks down. It's really good. I'm going to make fried ripe plantains with tomato sauce. I'm making... Um, Palava sauce. Palava sauce is like, it's jute leaves or molokia leaves. They, they use it in other places in the Middle East as well. And it's like a steamed jute leaf sauce. It's really, really good. And I might make jollof rice as well because jollof rice is a world known Liberian or West African dish. So I'm going to do a little taste of West Africa for everyone. I'm really wow. excited about that. Yum, that sounds so good. And that's so beautiful to honor your mom in that way. Is she, where is she? She has passed on. Oh. She passed on about four years ago in 2017. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just that memory of her, all the memory of my mother are just so beautiful, full of laughter, full of lots of like her crazy jokes and sayings. I want to bring that energy to her on her birthday and just like, let's eat and toast to Gloria. That was her name, you know, toast to her and have a good time and eat good food. Yeah, I think that's so important. Sharma and Derek talks about that too, like infusing your food with those intentions and, and how that transfers to when you eat it. Yep, yep. Yeah, because we are what we eat. We are our consciousness. 
you know, and that's very important for me. It's, it's very beautiful cooking for Shaman Durek because, you know, he's nurturing everyone. And here I am nurturing the nurturer. So I really have to be in good consciousness. I have to be in good spirits, you know, because it is true that we are what we eat, we are what we ingest. So I want to make sure that the, the person who is healing others, you know, gets some healing foods in his stomach as well. And who heals you then? <laughs> Tamar Durek and everybody else and the rest <laughs> of the world. So it becomes this kind of like infinity, you know, like yes. you me and I heal you. And that's how we are meant to exist, you know, that we're all nurturing each other with all the gifts we have, right? Because I might be a chef, but I'm not a shaman and I'm not, a, I don't know, a mechanic or a computer person. So if I nurture somebody who's a shaman or I nurture somebody who knows computers or if I nurture somebody who knows finance, then I, you know, so again, it becomes this beautiful exchange. That's my favorite way to live life. I love that exchange and it just feels so yeah. good. And like, yeah, sharing from your passion is just like the best way to, to give. Um, yeah, actually, I, I learned a story when I was in India about that kind of way of cooperation. And they say it's the cooperation between the blind man and the lame man. They're both trying to get to a destination, but the blind man can't see and the lame man can't walk. So if the blind man puts the lame man on his shoulder, then he can direct the blind man and say, all right, go left, go right. And together by cooperation, they both get to their destination. So beautiful. That's a heart smuggling <laughs> moment. <laughs> um and then let's let's talk more about conscious cooking so if someone doesn't really know what that means just yeah explain that so for me conscious cooking really means cooking with intent cooking with intention so you know we live in a foodie world right now where people want to see the art of food you know and we make beautiful dishes to look really nice and of course that's one of the components of conscious cooking is it should look so beautiful that even if somebody isn't hungry, they want to eat. So that's a good part. But sometimes we might be mixing uh, tastes or qualities of food that may not help our bodies, right? That might, in, you know, like end up in indigestion or, sub, or something like that. So if you're cooking with a lot of ginger to aid your digestion, you don't want to then cook with something else you know, I, I can't think about anything off my head, but you don't want to mix things that are going to neutralize each other and then you don't get the, the actual benefit, right? Like in Ayurveda, for example, they say with something like watermelon, eat it alone or leave it alone, right? So you won't find in Ayurvedic fruit salad, you won't find watermelon with other fruits because watermelon is cooling, but other fruits, the acids are meant to help like increase your digestion. But then they end up neutralizing each other. And what do you do then? So you are finding in Ayurveda, people will eat watermelon or most other melons alone. And they will eat other fruits, you know, without that. Because each fruit has a different purpose that it does or it helps with your digestion. So conscious cooking is like that. It's like, what's going to help with what I'm looking for from this food? right? Like you look at things like nightshades, like eggplants or tomatoes. I wouldn't eat them at night, right? You can eat them in the day because the sun is out. There's lots of fire for your digestion, but at night it might create a type of gas in your stomach. So then you're left with like having to then, um, how do you say, compensate for having eaten foods that, that increases gas in your stomach. So that's what conscious cooking is for me, is how to cook in such a way that your body gets ample benefit from what you're eating. So I'm not just cooking to eat something because, oh, food's good. It's like, yeah, food is good, but when should I eat certain food and when should I not eat certain food? Mm, so. Yeah, there's so much to that. Like there's so, like oh, I'm yeah. reading a ch Chinese medicine book about like food pairing and it's so intricate. I was like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> I've not learned any yeah. of this. <laughs> Those cultures are so rich when it comes to food pairing and food understanding. Whereas like here, yeah, we're like, oh, I'm hungry. I should eat something. Nah, and we just eat. <laughs> and it's like, actually, certain foods shouldn't be eaten at a certain time or certain foods shouldn't be eaten with other foods. You know, but we're just like, but I was hungry. So. <laughs>
Yeah, we're so disconnected from that. And so if someone were to want to learn more about this, where would you direct them? Oh, man. Um, there's so many resources. Uh, yeah, there's Ayurvedic cooking. And there's a lot of Ayurvedic resources you can find online right now. Um, as a chef, of course, I can consult with people about, you know, like eating and so they can find my Instagram and send me a DM and like we can go from there. Um, I can come to wherever I'm going as far as my traveling through the US, you know, and do a cooking dinner just so people can try that type of conscious food I'm talking about. Um, one thing I love to do when I lived on the farm, when I managed the farm before I was traveling, was my clients would actually come to my farm and we would walk in the garden. And I wanted them to see like this is where your food is going to come from this afternoon and one of my favorites was i had a whole asian spread in my garden so i had the thai basil i had my eggplants i had my thai chilies and one of my clients came over and we made rice with you know ginger garlic eggplant thai basil with everything coming right from my garden of course except the seasonings like the oil and stuff but she was so amazed because she got to try food that was picked and cooked within an hour of picking it. So you get to try vegetables that are so fresh. And then it was in season, so it was seasonal eating. I, 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 get, I, I can go very nerdy when it comes to this. Like... I love it. <laughs> I, it's one of, I've only experienced it a few times too, where you get to go and pick and cook, but it's like, oh, just you feel so much more connected to the whole journey and you know you like in your body as you do this and to earth and like all the yeah. things and and it, the flavor is like whoa it's so much that's magic. something yeah that's something else i do is picking food right from the garden like zucchini or a cucumber or tomato and just eating it as it is like even if you just steam it but eating it without all the seasonings just to actually taste the natural flavor of what's coming from mother earth that's a whole different food experience yes i i lived in australia for two years and i came back and i remember i tried a cucumber and i was like Ugh. i was like what is this from the grocery store i'm like holy shit there's this like you know food is a lot of the stuff at the grocery store is just so not i don't know either has stuff on it or it's been picked so long ago that the nutrients exactly are exactly yeah, I, I remember I was in, so the last time I was in Liberia where I was born was 2012. I was visiting my mom at the time and I was visiting during ripe mango season. And I mean, you didn't have to pick it. All we did was wait for the rain and the winds and there'll be mangoes dropping from the tree. And you pick a, you just pick a ripe mango off the floor, wash it, peel it and bite into it. And then I came back to the U.S. and I tried to get a mango at Whole Foods, and I was just like, "This, like, this is so unfair, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's so unfair." Yeah, let's talk about the benefits of having fresh food too. Well, because you you get the fresh nutrients, you know, you get the fresh nutrients, you get the fresh experience. <laughs> Of course, we live in a culture that has been so spoiled with convenience. So anybody can say, you know, well, I want my avocado in December or I want my mango in December. And it's like, but you're missing out in the season of it when it's right there to give your body that type of benefits. You know, we look at when the body is ready to receive food for winter. You know, you look at the type of food for winter, they're all, they all have this warm color to it the pumpkins, the, the squashes, they all have this beautiful warm color to create that energy within us. You know, you look at the freshness of food in summer, you look at the berries to hydrate us. And it's like, nature's not stupid, guys. <laughs> she knows, she knows how, she, Mother Nature knows how to nourish her children. But we get so stubborn and we want to eat food out of convenience. And we're like, wow, you know, I want a mango and it's freaking December. It's like, yeah. We, we could go into that and go crazy about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, that's another part of the seasonal cooking. It's like, even I sometimes will forget what's in season because everything is always in season at the store. And I'm like, wait, what? Exactly. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. It's a supermarket. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and the importance of nourishing your body, especially in times like this when, you know, there's a big illness or 
disease going around and like the importance of like nourishing yourself yeah because you know not to get into that but that's one thing we're not hearing much of is nourishing fortifying your body with proper nourishment you know that's our first line of defense is what are we putting into our bodies what proper foods are we putting into our bodies and when we do that then any other thing else you know that we put into our bodies will help just keep our immunity up so that's that's for me that's my first line of defense is what am i eating at this time mm-hmm. you know yeah. and what am i feeding my tribe at this time because whatever we feed ourselves, we feed into our spirit. Then people can see, oh my God, your energy is so good. You bring so much light. So yeah, the light is coming because I'm putting the proper fuel in myself. Yeah. Simple yeah. as that. I know, it's like, it's so simple. It's, it makes me sad. But then it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not. But it, it just feels so good when you do it and take that time. It's like you go to a store and you look at the ingredients. You're like, I don't even understand what half of these are, you know? Yeah. yeah, so it's very important. I, I take that very seriously as far as what I'm putting into my body. Of course, I cheat every now and then. We all have our junk food. You yeah. know, I'm a, I'm a Skittle fiend. So every now and then I have some Skittles. But I, I, I make sure I, I make sure there's enough power to make sure that Skittle gets out of my system. <laughs> <That's> so- <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're all human like it's okay to it's okay to eat what you love some like those exactly. naughty things but our guilty pleasures yeah but most of the time being fueling yourself with nourishment I exactly like thank you so so much if someone were to want to work with you um what are you offering and you kind of already touched on it but just to amplify yeah. it yeah so i offer dinner events like it's kind of like the the cache experience like tasting the type of food that i cook um i offer person like person to person cooking as well i offer food consultation a little bit of like understanding the type of foods that we're eating and how to really like better integrate it into our lives um just looking at just understanding our relationship with nutrition coming from other earth so i offer that um, but my favorite is the, the, the cache table, you know, experience where you get a bunch of friends together and I come in and either do a taste of West Africa or a taste of India or, you know, a mixture of both. Like it was really far out in 2016. I was with my mom on the farm and we were picking some sweet potato leaves, you know, and she's like, we should try this with pasta. Now, sweet potato leaves is a traditional Liberian dish, but I made it with bow tie pasta and oh my god it was just like whoa now here's a fusion of tradition and tradition that i will stand behind so sometimes i mix it up like that and it's a beautiful experience so So, there's much to be offered we can can discuss it yeah sounds amazing i definitely want to get a group of friends together and do that that'd be so fun like such a great way to spend time with people is around the table that's another huge thing yeah growing up in Liberia that was my sense of safety was watching my mom and her friend eat, eat and talk and laugh and I always refer to the world is so as I, I was saying is I'd like to give people the cash experience with their friends you know and it's like yeah come and join with us and it's so sweet watching people interact with each other around food and it it's so important because for those 20 30 minutes takes there's no your side my side it's just the food side such a beautiful experience so thank you and if people want to find you where can they find you i'm on instagram as chef e-s-h-a-s-m-e amazing thank you so so much thanks for having me thanks for yeah doing this with me I forgot my question of the podcast is what was the last random act of kindness someone did for you? The last random act of kindness someone did for me it was a friend yesterday who just came up to me and said, I have a gift for you. And it was this envelope with money in it. And I was just like, wow, thank you so much. You know, it was really cool. But, and that taught me to always go and surprise someone else too. So I want to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Surprise the next person.
Yay, beautiful. That's such a such a nice surprise. It was pretty cool. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you again, Lexi, and hopefully we'll talk soon.